Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 5, Episode 6. This will have spoilers, and I'm watching it on a Prime Video. Let's get started. First up is Sophie Ellis. She is our model. She is a singer and a songwriter. And she was placed in front of these very vivid, bold kind of graphics, uh, which I don't think plays as usual in, in what the artists end up painting. After four artists, the artists turn their easels around, and Sophie's going to pick one of these to take home. On um, the turnaround, I'm a little worried, and especially worried because I have to talk about these things because I'm committed to it, and I shall do so. Here's the first one up. Um... There are criterion that I use to judge by, about five or six of them, and I just made a video about what they are. I tend to start with the first one, which is, is, is a resemblance. There is not a resemblance to her. Um, I also am looking for brightness. I'm looking for lost and found edges, value changes, all the regular, you know, composition, the regular things that you would do when you're looking at any type of painting, whether it was a portrait or not. When we pull back, it's a little bit more effective. This person's palette is particularly neutral, so he's not a colorist, and I don't have a problem with a neutral palette at all. I think what I'm having a little bit of a problem with is not... Wow. Something about the coloring just doesn't allow her to look alive for me. Uh, I need to think about that. All right, here's the next one, which is definitely influenced by or Oriental art. It's... Um, does not have a likeness to her at all. A beautiful, gentle drawing. You know, it's a beautiful, lovely piece to look at. Uh, for Portrait Artist of the Year, it's not going to fulfill the brief. You know, the, uh, the, <laughs> the winner ends up, as it turns out, I, I checked and looked, and they're going to end up painting Tom Jones, you know, the pop star back from uh, a while ago. Uh, you know, this, can you imagine but Tom Jones? painted in this style. Oh my gosh, that would be, uh, oh, it's silly to even think of. But in terms of a drawing and execution, it's it's beautiful. It's soft, it's sensitive, uh, but it is not going to be accepted, I don't believe, in a gallery that where this image is going to read from across a room. It just doesn't carry that that kind of weight and gravitas. So for those reasons, we will move on uh, oh no, first, before we move on, let's pull back. I think it's really important to pull back and see what it looked like in the space on that day. And yeah, you can see it's, 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 um, it's, it's just not going to hold up for the task that the, the winner needs to execute. This one, oh my gosh, this one I want to love because I love the palette. I love the, it was paint, the underpainting was all blue and the artist let the blue shine through. I love color shapes. I love value changes and shifts. The proportions are wrong and it doesn't look like her. There's something just off-putting about it. But uh, this has been an interesting field. Now Sophie picks one to take home with her and that doesn't have anything to do with the final judging of this episode. Uh, I feel for her. She doesn't have the, the strongest of picks to pick from. See, now pulled back. This is the one she, she chooses to take home. Uh, something about it is just off. I, I, I'm, and Sophie said what many people say. She says, this is the one that would look the best in my home. Oh, that's kind of the comment you don't, no, no artist ever wants to hear. I don't think people mean it in a mean way, but, you know, when you know that your art is being picked because it's going to look good next to your sofa, then maybe your sofa is your bigger concern more than how much you love the art. <laughs> so that's a pretty big generalization. But this is the one she chooses to take with her. Looks a little bit better from this angle, but uh, something's a little weird about it. All right, the next one up is Adrian Lester. Adrian is an actor and director, and I don't know what it is about judges and dark-skinned participants, but they nearly almost put dark-skinned people in front of yellow backgrounds. I can't tell you how many times they have done this. The, um, they, they used to put them always in this black chair, which seems to have disappeared for this season, but the yellow persists, <laughs> again, against people with a certain skin tone. Um... Just an observation and something maybe that uh, I am, I'm more sensitive about than one needs to be. Anyway, this is what Adrian looks like. 
And now four hours later, the, the artists turn their easels around. Ooh, that one in front looks pretty darn impressive. Ooh, this could be a good competition. Wow, look at that. Wow, that looks great. Okay, so this person used, here's an example of using really neutral tones as well as uh, we saw earlier, but, um, but it reads alive and it reads, it certainly looks like him. Um, there's a lot of color in those neutrals. There's reds and there's blues. It's nicely done. And I really enjoy the composition. It's anchored in nicely. How nice to put that bar of blue below. That was just, that's smart. Anchors them in and, and allows the, um, allows that background to recede there and then come forward where his head is. Uh-oh, here now I have a problem. Okay. Uh, <laughs> does not look like him. Um... My, my, I'm sorry, my first reaction to this just was the eyes. When eyes are wide open like that, to that extent, it usually indicates fear. When you can see so much white around someone's pupils, it indicates fear. And so I am reading the expression as opposed to being able to even respond to the painting as a painting. And that's unfortunate. If that issue was solved, I think we start to have some pretty solid forms but, wow, um, that, that's hard. Here from far away as well. Yeah, it just signals alarm, alarm, alarm. So yeah, I, I guess I like my art to be somewhat calm and reflective. That's a, little, that's a little too graphic for me. Okay, here's one that's calm and reflective. Whoa, love lost and found edges. That's just something that I adore. This person's successfully done that. Look at the cerulean blue on the side of the head, the orange in the ear. Oh, the reflection on the back of the neck, the yellow playing up there. Ah, oh, it's just beautifully done. This is a really, really nice piece. This person is a colorist. They know how to mix color, and they haven't used a lot of titanium white in order to get their color value shifts. They've made, they've mixed for those shifts. Nicely done. Oh, from far away? Yeah, see, now that could, that could read from across the room. That's nicely done. Oh, and I gotta say, I'm sorry if dogs are barking in the background. Darn. Uh, but, uh, but that's what's happening. All right, um, so which one will Adrian pick to go home? Let's take a look and see. Oh, okay, that's one I would have picked. Nice choice. All right, on to the next and last model. The next last model is Nitin Sawe. Sawe Ne. Oh boy, he's a musician, producer, and composer. And let's take a look. Yeah, there he is. He's in front of a red background and wearing a dark leather jacket. All right, four hours into the competition, the artists turn their easels around. Oh boy, this is, this is gonna be hard to talk about. Ah, here we go. All right, so the first one up is this one, which looks like a watercolor. Uh, the person spent a lot of time on the drawing and the drawing was really excellent and did not have time to apply paint. There just is, there's just not really enough to respond to here. It, it is an excellent drawing and it is an excellent likeness. But in terms of paint application, he either didn't have the time or if he's that tentative with applying paint, that's not going to fulfill the brief of being able to do a gallery work. Yeah, so you can almost hardly see it there. I wish he had brought out uh, some bigger brushes and, and got, gotten some, some of the major planes and, and areas completed. But I don't know what his process is. And I, uh, we'll have to see if he goes on, if we see more of his work or not. The next one, also very good likeness. Certainly not a colorist. I mean, we have a completely neutralized painting here. You know, when, when, when burnt sienna is your strongest color, well, there's a little bit of cerulean blue there starting, or maybe uh, cobalt blue on the, the collar of the shirt. But that could have been exploited so much more. Uh, it's curious to me why somebody would choose not to do that. You know, it might have been an environment where they needed to feel extremely safe, and, and this is very safe. It's also, as I said, has a good, certainly shows that he can, he can create a likeness and, and create uh, forms with volume and, and uh, density. So good job on that. Um, however, because of the lack of color used overall, I have to admit that um, 
I, I will not remember this painting probably in about an hour from now. It just, it just won't impact my brain for long enough. Whereas this one, I've got to say, this is impactful. This is going to stay in my brain for a long time. This is... Where do you start? I mean, obviously, there's not a likeness. It looks very cartoony, and they have gotten so many painters they've uh, passed over for doing this kind of what they call cartoony and extreme characterization kind of work. But uh, that will not be happening today, spoiler. Um, it, I, I like it from far away. Oh, oh, I'll come back to what I was going to say. I'm going to remember that. So Nitin, let's look at what Nitin's pick is, and it's this one. And that makes sense why it would be that one. Um, it's the most realized of the paintings in terms of its uh, completeness and its, uh, 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 its ability to recognize him as an individual. Next, the judging begins. This is when all the artists are lined up and three of them will be, picked, will be pulled to be semi-finalists. Only one will go forward into the finals of the, the program. So the first one up is this one. And this is an amateur painting painter. And I thought I might keep track of that from here on. Who's an amateur and who's a pro? And at some point, I think we need to have a conversation about what makes someone an amateur and what makes someone a pro. Um, you know, are you an amateur the minute you take some money for producing art? Or are you um, a professional? Are you a professional when you're full-time? Uh, very few of my artist friends who, who paint uh, successfully can afford to be full-time painters, but they're certainly professionals. So we, you know, that's something to talk about in the future. But this particular competition, they do mix amateurs and professionals together. This person is a professional and this person is a professional. So we've got two professionals and one amateur. And without being sure of what that means, I just thought I might raise the awareness that that is also a factor in this competition. And I think that's good. You know, just on the face of it, I think it's good. It means it's more inclusive uh, as opposed to being a select club and uh, can speak to all people because so many of us are, are hobbyists or, or amateurs at, at what we do. So let's see. So the next part is the judges look at the self-portrait that the artist submits to be on the program and that is placed next to the work that they did today. So here's the first one up. You can see the self-portrait on the left and the one that he did today. I'm really surprised because the one on the left is so different in terms of uh, everything. I, w I would never have guessed that these two paintings were painted by the same painter. So that, that really surprises me and shows me that he has some, some skills that he, he just didn't seem to show today. So that's a consideration. Now, if we're going to judge it on the painting he did today, um, you know, I'm not a fan of the painting on the right. Next one up. This woman is an amateur. Something a little strange about her self-portrait. I don't know what it is exactly. Um, it has to do something... Oh, man. You know what? I think it has to do has something to do with uh, not integrating forms. If you look at, you know, the head, doesn't the hair look like it was cut out and then kind of like photoshopped on top of her head? Something about the forms don't move into each other, in and out of each other. Whereas this one, there's a lot of movement of forms in and out. What I'm talking about is, you know, false edges, false, in life I call it false endings, false beginnings. Um, but in painting, it's called lost and found edges. It's just lovely to have a variety of lost and found edges in a painting rather than hard edges because there really are no hard edges in, in real life. Our eyes really don't see hard edges. Um, so it, it's more reflective of, of the way our eyeballs really take in information. All right, the final judging Let's take one last look at the three up today. You know, to me, the winner is fairly obvious. The winner is, dun, 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 this one. I think it was the strongest painting of the day as well. But you never know with these judges, that's for sure. 
Um, but I, I don't think I complained about the judging very much today, but I did talk about having criterion for judging. So if you are enjoying my videos, please sign up for my YouTube channel, subscribe, and remember, keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and I will see you next time. We have episode seven coming up. Yeah, that'll be fun. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.